Hello Virgo, welcome to Monarch Intuition and today I'm going to be doing our December 2022 monthly check-in reading for you. So if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is I like to pull one major arcana to see the energy and then clarify with a different deck. So what's going on for the sign of Virgo? We have the Hierophant coming out and we have the Chariot. Okay. So when I see the Hierophant right here, this does represent, you know, government, military, law, legal system, school, education. And with the chariot, this represents having a victory within your life, but it can also represent the police right here. So you could be dealing with the police department within your life. You could be dealing with, you know, just having victory over something, getting that degree, getting that job that you really seek within the Hierophant organization. Because, you know, you can go and work inside of a Hierophant organization. If you're in the military and there's a rank structure, then, you know, you're there. If you're going to school and you know you have the dean all the way down to the student body, then you're there. You're in the Hierophant, right? Now, the Hierophant does represent the Pope. It represents, you know, the person who is at the highest religious order that connects directly to God because, you know, the Pope is represented by the number five or the pentagram, and the top of the pentagram represents light. So having divine enlightenment. So someone of divine enlightenment ruling a structure, and you could be inside of that structure right here. So let's clarify this energy. What's going on with the Hierophant and the Chariot? Attaining victory within this Hierophant. Seeing things from a different perspective or a much higher perspective. Rising above the situation. It's kind of like in a weird way. Seeing past the Wizard of Oz. You know that there's a man behind the curtain, but you're looking past that. Well, why is there the man behind the curtain? Why did he think of that? I think that's what the question is here, Virgo. The man who created Oz, who created him? Why did he create Oz? What was his epiphany? And I kind of think that's what you have to understand right there is you need to start asking the questions that go beyond that. So you see someone who's at the top of something. How did they get there? Why did they get there? What is their secret? And that could be what you're seeking right there is the secret and the knowledge of who is the Hierophant, but not just who is the Hierophant, why is he the Hierophant? You have the Three of Cups in reverse, you have the Four of Swords upright, and you have the Eight of Pentacles upright. I kind of feel like in a weird way, in order to be at the top of something, you have to give up a lot of happiness, okay? With the Three of Cups in reverse, this represents that you want to celebrate with people, but at the end of the day, it's almost as though your cups have poured out, right? You want to go out and talk to these people, but you really can't because maybe you just know things about them. Maybe they just seem like they're going around in a toxic loop all the time. It's kind of like those group of people who never grow up out of the drinking phase and the party phase. That's all they do. And, you know, there are people who do that well into their 50s and 60s. With the Four of Swords, these people seek peace. And I think that's what you're seeking right here is that you are seeking peace and stability with this eight of pentacles. It's not saying that you can't go out and do stuff because there is that sword underneath the bed. But at the same time, it's like, I'll do it when I feel good. It's like, um, why would you go to a dive bar every fucking Friday or Saturday or whatever, right? When you could just save up your money and have a really nice vacation to say the keys. And you can drink there at like a five-star luxury hotel with, around other people who are, you know, just doing it and they're classy. I kind of feel like that's the energy right here is that the Hierophant people see things from a much different perspective. They don't get trapped up in the Three of Cups, okay? They don't just see people and think, I want to be just like them. I want to do the same things that they're doing. They're saying, no, I need peace. I need to focus. I need to craft things for myself. I need to have my own revelation or my own epiphany. And I think that's what you're doing right here. So let's use the Wild Unknown Tarot. I've been using this within all the other readings. Okay, that card wants to come out. We have the moon. Um, try to keep these on the table. You have the Ace of Wands and the Fool coming out. The moon represents being caught up in an illusion right here, being caught up in mystery. But you see the fool, you see a brand new opportunity, the opportunity for a blank slate, for a restart within your life. A way to move away from these things. And I kind of feel like that's what you're focusing on right here is, 
I need to move away from these people. Because that's what you have to think about is that within the Hierophant organizations, the only way people get to the top is if they're focused, right? The higher you go up in the social ladder, the more psychopathic or sociopathic the people are. Like watch the movie American Psycho and he talks about, you know, I do 7,000 push-ups in the morning. I, you know, use 25 different moisturizers. I take an extremely cold shower. Like, but that's the thing. A lot of them do that. A lot of like ultra wealthy people at the top. Now I'm not saying, you know, like movie stars and whatnot. I'm talking about people in control of things. Okay. So maybe that's what you need to focus on right there is that you need to focus on how they got to the top. And you have to look at, you know, these three people right here and say, I don't want to be like them. I don't want to just go around this entire loop forever. And, you know, that can be really hard, especially within, you know, marginalized communities, right? Like, I see it every day within my community, just people, you know, wanting to do drugs and fuck and whatever. So, you know, I kind of feel like you just want to grow and move past that within your life. So let's look at this Four of Swords energy. We have the Father of Cups with the High Priestess, yeah. Seeing things from 2020. Hindsight is 2020. You have to be in charge of your emotions. This month, you really need to be in charge of your emotions right here. Learn how to control everything. I'm not going to give my cup to these people right here, okay? That's what you have to be saying to yourself. I'm not going to go and force myself into this community. If situations happen, then they happen. But I need to focus on these things right here. And that could be very hard, especially if you are looking for love. If you are looking for, you know... Maybe you don't even want to be at the top. But I kind of feel like in a way the universe wants you there. Okay? And you know, it's lonely at the top. That's what you have to understand. It's lonely getting to where you want to be within life. Because you kind of want to just be a normal person. You want to be celebrating with the Three of Cups. Like, what's wrong with just having a 40-hour, you know, job and having some love and having some kids and whatever. But the universe is saying, no, I want you above that. I want you higher than the Hierophant. I want you to see and have this epiphany for yourself. I, oh, my ear's ringing, sorry. Um, I want you to see things from a much higher perspective. I want you to be past that. This could be like, you know, in a weird way. Have you ever seen, I think it's called Elysium. I believe that's the name of the movie. It's, um, they built a giant space center out in the space and people were, who were multi-millionaires lived there. And everyone on Earth who was, you know, poor and whatever was starving. And it was overpopulated and crowded. But all the people up at the top were, you know, super rich. I'm not saying that that's a good way to live your life. But there is something here that's allowing you to go to Elysium. Like, go to the highest aspect. And be comfortable. The High Priestess. Showing you from 2020 perspective what you were supposed to be doing, holding on to your emotions, growing, becoming the King of Cups over the Three of Cups, ruling the Three of Cups. The Eight of Pentacles is the Five of Cups and the Mother of Swords. Yeah, it's lonely at the top because remember, when we look at the Five of Cups, it's the Three Cups that have fallen over and the Three of Cups. This person is showing up with his two cups, but these people have already left. These people are no longer there. Their cups have poured out and they've walked away. Because here's the thing, these three cups are only good for the moment. Okay? This is a very short-lived entertainment card. They're only there for the night. But I feel like you have this eternal cup right here where you could constantly fill up other people's cups. But what you need to see it is from a 2020 perspective. Have they ever gotten anywhere within their lives? Right? With the Mother of Swords coming out, that's the sharp truth that you need to hear. Look around your town. Look around the people who are around you. Okay? For example, you know, there are a lot of people who just... They can't stay in stable relationships, and when they do get into relationships, they want to just, you know, have them completely open, right? 
They don't want to settle down. They don't want to commit. They want to continue to do drugs. They want to continue to go to the parties and, you know, live like they're super young again. And they don't even see that life is flashing before their eyes or life is passing extremely quickly. And they've never accomplished anything. By the time they're 40 or 50, they're used up, they're beat up, whatever. And then they're like, well, I need to settle down. Well, now you have the opportunity to be settled down and established and generational wealth and all these things. And, you know, going to the, the keys while these people in the Three of Cups are now starting out with their first full-time job, say, working at McDonald's. Like, you know, some people are starting out in life at the age of 40. The mother of swords come in and that's the harsh truth that you need to hear and you have to make that decision for yourself. Do you want to be with the three of cups or do you want to be the king of cups and rule that situation? All these people who are doing these things and when they finally wake up out of their stupor from the five of cups, you know, you might be the one who owns the business. Okay, these cards want to come out. We have the Seven of Cups waking up from the stupor with the Daughter of Swords. And we have the Death card. And some people will die in their drunkenness. Some people will die in that fantasy. They will continue to chase the stars until nothing. You have a really good opportunity coming in for you. Let's look at that opportunity with the Hierophant. What's going on with the Hierophant? You have the Three of Wands. It's coming towards you with the Four of Swords. So you have double clarification of the Four of Swords. It's coming towards you. What you need to do is you need to stay still, okay? <clears throat> you need to stay still. You need to rest. You need to focus with your craft and your skills right here. Maybe you just, just maybe you're just bored. And you're tired of being stuck. But here's the thing, that's a great time for you to do other things because you know when life gets hectic again, you might be sitting there thinking like, Man, I wish I had that time to just do stuff for myself. I'd learn a new language or I'd, you know, pay attention to my hobbies. Yeah, I'd learn how to be more clever with the Seven of Swords right here. I would have studied more, I would have done something else. But it can also be like a clandestine thing coming towards you in a very sneaky manner. Like it has to be very hush-hush. You have the Four of Wands representing victory. With the Mother of Cups, you're going to be celebrating with the Mother of Cups. You're going to be celebrating something new. You're going to be celebrating with your partner, divine partner, divine alignment. And if you're in a relationship, a divine partner, a divine alignment does not have to be a loving person, okay? It could be a boss. It could be that perfect job. It could just be that thing that, you know, makes you happy, okay? That fulfills you. Because when we look at the feminine cards, they represent the ideas, whereas the kings represent physical things, okay? So the Mother of Cups is the idea of nurturing a situation because if you look at the Mother of Cups, she has a different cup from everyone else, including the King of Cups and the Suit of Cups. She has this very special elaborate thing because she's the concept of one love of the moon. She is the concept of, what's the word I'm looking for? Hold on, give me one second. Concept of love, concept of the moon, concept of, you know, Connecting to things that make you emotionally happy, whether it's love, career, finances, and you have the moon right here, right? So it's kind of like you're connecting past the moon. It's like you've beaten the situation, you've beaten the treachery, the darkness, and the, you know, disinformation of the moonlight. Misinformation. You have the magician. basically becoming, you know, the wizard yourself. And that's what this is. Meeting people who are also other wizards. And when we talk about wizards, I'm not talking about like those types. I'm talking about, you know, like people who are also magical, people who understand the ebb and flow, how to manifest, how to study, how to create, how to, you know, advance society into this, you know, magical realm. 
Because when we look at technology, all it is is, or when we look at magic, it's just unexplained technology. For example, when we look at the word necromancer, a lot of people think that it's, you know, bringing people back from the dead and whatnot. It's really not. Necromancy was just the art of preserving bodies. It's kind of like uh, mortuary sciences or being a mortician. So a necromancer is a mortician, or was. They knew the proper rites, burials, initiations, how to embalm the person. And even then, like, they had such good embalming techniques and such secretive embalming techniques that no one knows about it and no one knows how to do it today. So that's kind of what a wizard is, is like someone who doesn't reveal their secrets. It's very clandestine, very hush-hush, and that's the opportunity that you're having right here is to be in this very secretive thing, right? To be your own magician, to be your own wizard, and to have your own secrets and to pass them down and to pass them with other people. That's what you're connecting with right here. If you can move past the Three of Cups. We have the Chariot and the Nine of Pentacles. A very beautiful reading for you, Virgo. You're going to be seeing, you know, moving past the material realms, but also realizing that by moving past the material realms, you've attained everything that you seek, okay? Having victory within your own garden right here having a victory with the people who are just like you, who think the same way you do. And that's what you have to understand, Virgo, is that Vir Virgos are an extremely analyt analytical type of people, right? And you want to be around people who are also analytical like yourself. The problem is, Virgo, is that if you get stuck with people who are Three of Cups, you're going to always be frustrated within your life. So you need to connect with people who are studying, who are trying to become better, who you know, want to know the secrets of life and the mysteries of everything. And in order to do that, you have to learn yourself. A lot of people will say, oh, I don't have to read books. It'll just come to me. No, you have to read books. You have to study really hard. Sometimes it's easier for some people and sometimes it's harder for some people. But that's the mystery behind it and that's the analytical mind is studying crafting, becoming better, right? Because when we look at, say, fantasy movies or fantasy books, I don't really read them that much, but I, I find a few that are actually very good concepts, right? And there's one fantasy book where they teach people the concept of magic, right? And so they start them out with basic geometry skills. And they teach them geometry and then they teach them how to use a compass and then they teach them all these different things about you know connecting the points of the stars and whatever then they teach them electromagnetic engineering and all of these different things right and then the whole point is to create their own crystal that has their own life essence inside of it and this crystal is supposed to be like perpetual energy which we don't have today but that's what scientists are working on is perpetual energy and they take this crystal to rise above in the sky and then they learn how to create from what's in the sky. They learn how to take the atoms that are out of the sky and put them together and form things. And yeah, that sounds fantastic, but you have to start at point one. You have to start with basic geometry. You have to start with basic math, one plus one, in order to craft with the atoms because that's, you know, what scientists do now. They're, you know, using atomic particle accelerators, right? It's not that far off. It's, it's already here, it's just, it has to be shrunk down. And that's what the big deal is, is like, no one thought a cell phone would be as small as it is today, right? Because when computers were first invented, they took up giant rooms and all of a sudden we had this thing in our hands. We have our own little crystal, right? Think about these atomic particle accelerators being shrunken down to something the size of your hand. Like, why do you think wizards in movies always have like those metal pieces all over them? They created them themselves, and each one of those things is kind of like a mini computer and pulls things from the air. Like, it's it's fantastic, right? It sounds, like, out there and weird and just crazy and strange, but, I mean, that's what it is. So let's look at your Witch's Familiar Oracle cards. We have Fox Cunning. And we have fairy glamour. 
these are the things that are helping you right now, being glamorous and being very cunning. So pay attention to that. If you see a fox, it's there to help you. If you see a fairy, it is also there to help you. It is trying to teach you how to be cunning. It's trying to teach you to how to think outside the box. To not only just pay attention to the dreaming aspects, but how does it work? How does the wizard become the Wizard of Oz? What was his epiphany? How did he, you know, create the Emerald City? When we look at, say, um, you know, holograms, holograms are not that far from being created. We've been trying to make holograms for years, right? Holograms will, once they're finally created, will drastically change the way that the world is created, okay? The way that people watch and consume media, the way that people interact with other people, that is going to drastically change everything is when holograms are created. Now, people might say, you know, holograms, you know, 50 years ago, that's impossible. But nowadays we're looking at it, we're like, you know, that's really on the future, like in the next maybe five years. You have midnight, the most magical hour of all, and the veil, the future. You can't actually understand the future, but you can predict it, okay? You can predict the future, but you can't understand how it's going to happen yet. But here's the thing, if you break it down to a base idea, it won't be that difficult for you, right? If you break it down to, how could I say this? <clears throat> trying to think of like what would be a very good analogy about magic right here hmm you know like in movies where a wizard could like put their hands over water and then create a ball out of it and you know have it in the air and like look into it and scry into it you know that's all just taking the atoms of the water and moving them up, right? And then containing it within a sphere. Now that sounds really hard and it sounds crazy, like, right? But what is the technology that could work behind that? You don't know yet, but one day it's gonna click with you. One day someone is gonna say something and it's gonna be like, oh, that could actually happen. And maybe if you're studying a certain path right there, maybe that's what you could be doing. You know, Steve Jobs was a visionary, right? He created the, most people don't like Apple because it's, you know, overinflated, whatever, right? However, Apple changed the world when they came out with the iPhone. Changed the world. Remember that, right? So look at the midnight, the most magical hour of all. There is a, a spark. There is something at, you know, the strike of midnight. There's something about the future here. With the glamour and the cunning energy, it's something that's so crazy, but it, if you're smart enough, you'll understand it. I'm going to get one card for that. The Six of Wands. Victory. Begin anew. And the Masculine and Feminine. So you have the full card coming out with the begin anew and the full card again. I also kind of view this card as like the card of Scorpio because it is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's like the phoenix. You know, the phoenix goes and it, you know, crash lands and burns apart and then is reforged. The masculine and the feminine. Death is kind of considered a feminine thing, but at the same time it's also considered, life is considered a masculine thing. Energy and matter is masculine, void and nothingness is feminine, right? So that's kind of what I'm seeing right here for you, is understanding something like that. You have clarity and you have good luck. This doesn't make sense to you i kind of feel like in a couple of days it'll make sense for you all right it'll, it's going to make sense for you you're going to see something that just sounds so weird but you'll understand it if you don't think hey that's bullshit all right 
if you don't think that's just a bunch of fairy tale BS, because if, you know, half the time, fairy tales that are told years ago become reality later on, right? It is what it is. You know, people were in the 50s and 60s were talking about, you know, the cordless telephone. Well, we have cordless telephones. We also have cordless TVs and cordless everything. Rado, speed your journey, ease of transition, aid communication, bring good news, and find your spiritual way. I mean, not even, well, I guess it was about 100 years ago that people were eating arsenic. And people would say, oh, that's stupid nowadays, but they considered eating arsenic was a way to, you know, make you beautiful. That's how much science has changed, even within, you know, a hundred years. It, it's changed a lot. And so don't just sit there and think, oh, that's, you know, just too fantastic. That's just way out there. That's just far out, man. No, just think, okay, well, how could that be a thing? What's the logic? What's the reasoning? And if you are a wizard, if you're a magician, if you understand these things, then you'll know. You'll understand, you'll be able to connect and be like, oh, that makes sense because they do it this way and through this science and then they have the knowledge of this particular science and if you blend them together, it could create this idea and, you know, it's like a loop. Potency, ingwas, achievement, difficulties overcome, creativity, completion, fertility, spiritual meaning is unity and equanimity. So anyway, Virgo, I hope you enjoyed this reading and I'll talk to you later.